All right, welcome back. We are here in the Salty Mass. About to go meet, um... Was it Sarah? Sorel? Um... We have a, bunch, a few new quests in here, actually. Um... Far from home? Yeah, to Sorel. We also need to... Oh, right, we need to... Deliver a patch to Gareth the Baleen Trading Company, and we need to go to the Lighthouse, of course, which we might do after this, if we have the time. And... We'll need to go back to the Brackenberry Sanitarium someday, sometime. But this is our first task, of course. Alright. Also, don't we need to return a package? Yeah, yeah, we need to return that package. Alrighty then. Hail, traveler. You're always welcome here. Looking for a good time? Or just some rest? Uh... I need to talk to Cyril. You must be new in town, dearie. Yes, she's a thousand for the night and she's worth every pound. But I get a discount, do I not? Yes, pay 500 copper. Fancy a go with her? She nudges you in the ribs. I'll give you a special rate of 500 to thank you for your help with my little problem. I like a night with Sorel. You'll find her quarters upstairs. She lays a large hand on your shoulder. Don't mind the burly fellows at her door. They're just there to make sure everyone has a good time. And to make sure we don't overstay our welcome, presumably. And, you know, to make sure we don't get a little too, uh, a little too rough. And it's important for an establishment like this to have good bouncers. Of course. Let's, um, actually take a more proper look around the place, though. Oh. Oh, the Hadrid's Rebellion. Uh, royal rolled bills and receipts show amounts paid to Maya's staff as well as her expenses for ale, fish, and new linens. Oh. I'm actually kind of curious if we looked at those whether it would, uh, actually show that she was really, uh, overcharging. Linus, another round fast. Hello. She leans on the, uh, and tulips. I wonder, uh, how she got that nickname. She leans on the bar, her black painted nails tapping the wood. What'll it be? Um, what can you tell me about this place? She arches an eyebrow. Every foreign sailor and visiting villager knows about the Salty Mast. It's the most famous brothel in Defiance Bay. She points to an Amau woman. You want to know more? Just ask Maya. Any uh, regulars looking for work? They've got to earn their ale money somehow. Take a look. Yeah. I really can't afford to hire adventurers right now. Not until we increase our revenue from our uh, holdings. Welcome. What about the refreshments? Yeah, nothing here that we need either. Wade. Wade's eyes are red-rimmed and unfocused. He stares into a filthy mug as if searching for something. He shivers and takes another drink. Hmm. Perhaps you've had enough to drink. His eyes are filled with shame and self-loathing. What do you want from me? Oh, 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 this is that, Wade. Right, she did mention he would be drinking. Or, well... She said he'd be here, whether he was drinking or partaking in other services. Was unknown at the time. I heard about Darren. Are you okay? Wade turns the mug in his hands. No, not at all. Yeah, this is the... Uh, he's depressed right now. 
I don't think we need to be too confrontational to him. He's clearly not handling in the most healthy of ways, and uh, it's bringing trouble to his wife. To his wife, but getting confrontational would only make matters worse for him. I was taking the boy fishing, and I just wanted to stop on the way for a drink, a quick one. So I told him to wait for me outside. I only meant to stay a few minutes, but by the time I came out, he was gone. Oh. Huh. Kidnapped, perhaps, or... No, he probably is the one who fell, or... I saw the soul in the water there. That was probably him. And you sit here still? She snorts. You sit here still? <laughs> He stares at his mug again and takes a quick drink. I don't know what I'm going to tell Oda. Well, let's actually verify his fate before we tell her anything. I don't want to get her hopes up or down before we know for sure. I'm going to go look for him anyway. Well, he, he didn't mean for this to happen, but he definitely shouldn't have left his kid outside. If he absolutely had to come here for a drink... He should have taken his kid home first. Um. Hmm. It's no excuse to sit here. Get your ass out there and look for him. Is that you're a terrible father? Yeah, you really should be looking for him. You think I haven't tried? I've lived in Andre's gift all my life. When someone's been missing this long... Wade turns back to his drink and takes a long gulp. Hmm. I see. Well, I think I know where to find his remains, but before that... Hmm. Some nice lighting here. I can see we don't exactly have a lot of privacy up here. A lot of dancers, though. Lyria, Lurina. Hail, traveler. Lurinia. The dwarven maid raises the hem of her skirt to show you a well-muscled leg. You've never experienced anything like this before. Trust me. Yeah, not right now. Or, what do you mean? Let's play naive. Why, I could climb a tall thing like you all night. She slaps a smooth, firm thigh. <laughs> uh, not right now. A lady's got to have her fun, especially these days. Astoundingly, there's no spare change between these cushions. <laughs> there's a collie. Good day, stranger. The pale oh, it's a pa fellow pale elf. The pale elf's gold eyes are the color of a winter sunset. She touches your cheek with a cool hand. You look like you've journeyed far. Let me show you comfort and rest. Eh, tell me about yourself. I came to Defiance Bay from the frozen lands at the southern end of the world. Few of my people venture this far north, but none know how to warm a cold night like we do. I mean, I am one as well, so... Her skin seems to glow in the darkened bar. How much? I understand we have you to thank for the newfound peace and quiet, yes... Only 200 for you. Ah, uh, not right now. Aldwin. You human? Hail, traveler. The elf's... No, elf. The elf's long hair frames high cheekbones and a long slender nose. It's not every day that the club gets a breath of fresh air. And who are you? I'm a native of the, native of the Darewood and an expert in the subtle arts. If it's a practiced scale and finesse you seek look no further hm. not right now I am well I've already purchased the surfaces of Sorel oh there's Sorel's guards I'm keeping an eye on you 
Hello, Sorel. How do you do? Is that paints on the floor back there I saw? Powder almost hides the circles under her eyes. The rouge dusts her two prominent cheekbones. Ah, the makeup. Despite it all, Sorel is beautiful. She favors you with a smile she must have practiced and perfected. Hello, stranger. Let me make you more comfortable. Um, it is rather warm in here. I mean, we did pay for her services. We should probably make use of them, should we not? Well met, friend. Back again? There's something I need to discuss with you. She runs a smooth finger along your neck and under your chin. Just tell me what you like. It's extra if you want to bring someone else in, though. Yeah, mm, tempting. But your thr uh, Thristwin sent me. He needs that medallion. So do I. Sorel raises her chin. I offered him half his money of the, or I offered him his half of the money, and he refused it. She crosses her arms and paces in a slow circle around you. I'm sure he told you all about his broken clan. Did he tell you that I got him uh, where he is today? I think he mentioned that. I really am sorry for him, but I'll bet you anything he lives better now than he did in Erglanfath. I've worked a long time for a way out, and I'm not giving it up just because Thirstwin's suddenly gotten nostalgic. Hmm. Interesting. Resolve, though. Uh, this isn't about wealth, it's about finding who you are. Sorel rolls her eyes and leans against the bedpost. I finally found a way out of this life. That's what matters to me. Hmm. Can't argue with that. I really am sorry for him. But I'll bet you anything he lives better now than he did. Hmm. How much would it cost to buy it from you? She laughs. It's worth 6,000 pounds. You've got that kind of coin. I'll gladly help you spend it. Yeah, I'll bet you will. And within relics are worth a lot less second hand. You won't get more than 4,000 for this. Lines crease her brow. I suppose you're right. If you can afford that, it's yours. I can't. I really can't. We'll have to, uh, come back with a little more resolve or a little more coin. I probably could have actually talked to her without purchasing her services now that I think about it, though. All right. Well, at least we've, uh, we haven't resolved this matter, but we have at the very least, um, you know, figured out what we need to do. What is my resolve? I think I lowered my resolve, specifically. Yeah, down to 14. Um... I can probably find somewhere to rest that will raise it up a little bit. All right. We're going to step out into the flooded part of town. Light, flame, and sound. Okay. What is this animat here? It's a rain blight. I see. To ourselves. Should we attack it? Maybe not. A couple of vessels here too. Um. No. Give up. There we go. Uh, give me a. I mean, they're gonna come for me, right? Everyone else, back off. Laid in the. No. Edder. Get over here. Dark. There you go. And let's get a How bad? fireball.
And I mean, they're rain, so maybe shocking them will help. Let me attack that animat. yet um move a little bit yeah. this way and then give me a nice heal wait actually get a little further this way because these are vessels right no there you go there we go that should do it and go ahead. Oh, I used it up already before. Who can trust? Why don't we interrupt them? There we go. Should have hurt the animats at least. Wonderful. The, uh, I don't know, all of those one that killed them. Yeah, Soul Shock at least hurt them. Or hit them. Let's go. I mean, it is my primary damage dealing spell, so let's just keep going for that. Hi. It. Uh, yeah, that one's almost dead. Why don't we just start attacking you? All of you. What? You too, Mr. Wolf. Imata, right? Itumak, right? All right, that's going slow. Uh, give me a magic missile. Not all that effective, huh? Let's try shocking him. He's a really big anime. That's not very helpful. Okay, that does some damage. Oh, you know what? Oh, you're way too far away. Stand still. Interesting to note that he won't actually get closer to cast that. Can't get. And shield. Minus 10 accuracy, plus 10 deflection. Um, I'm actually not sure if that's better than our current. I'll have to, have to check. Their Inquithans are legendary for their architecture and magical abilities, but their metal craft leaves much to be desired. This bronze shield is beautiful, but heavy and slow. Yeah, it's probably worse. Hmm. More awakened Adra and some shattered animat armor. As you wish. Go on, get As these. you wish. Get these. Well. Come on. There you go. Primal water. Oh. It's probably going to be useful for some crafting. The binding copper, too. All right. What is it? An Ingwith an Ingwithan scepter spike. This looks like the top portion of a scepter. There's a short spiraled spike at one end for attaching the finial. 
something that makes a nice weapon. Special magic item. Barnacles encrust the hole of this beached boat. Something that something the jagged uh, outer finger is most likely has clawed deep rifts in the wood. Whoever tried to sail through them must have been desperate or inexperienced. Yeah, probably. More enemies? No. Oh, the uh, scepter base. This looks like the base of a scepter. It seems to have broken cleanly from the section above it. What if I didn't know anyone who can repair it? And there are more down here. Let's... Yeah. We'll sneak for the moment. Imatel. I don't think I've talked to you yet. Some payday this turned into. How do you do? An old man paces the dock and looks out over the water. He's fussing over something large and round, which he constantly shifts from one hand to the other. You're not certain whether his wide-eyed, gape-mouthed expression marks surprise or fear. It, doesn't, it seems he isn't either. You uh, don't look like a guard. He examines you your equipment more closely. Say, say, you wouldn't be interested in making some coppers, would you? It depends on what you need. He shows you the object in his hand. It's a large, round opal with ink within runes carved into it. It glistens with his sweat. See the ship that went down over there? I've been looking for someone to help me recover some missing cargo. It's the scepter, isn't it? Tell me more about this missing cargo. He licks his lips. We started in cold morn and now we're making our way down the river, loading and unloading as we went, business as usual. Okay, what exactly happened? He massages the opal in a, in a, in a clammy palm. When we reached Ina's rest, we may have agreed to, uh, Take on a few crates from some place called Cleban Rilag. A couple of the lads snuck a peek at the cargo, saw suits of armor and a broken scepter. He shrugs. Don't know why anyone would want a broken anything. These animancers will buy dirty stockings if you say they came from the ruins. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, there are probably people out there who would buy the dirty stockings uh, regardless. There's uh, weird interests out there. He closes his hands around the opal in a white knuckled grip. We were almost to Defiance Bay when the screaming started. I've seen my share of bar barroom brawls, but this sounded different. I was topside when the ca with the captain, but he and the first mate went below decks to see what, what, all, what all the commotion was about. When they didn't come back, I looked into the hold. He shudders. I saw one of those suits of armor walking around all by itself. It was covered in blood. When it saw me, it started running for the hatch, so I closed it. He squeezes his eyes shut. Yeah, I've been fighting those. Um, so... How did the ship get here? Well, the rest of the crew is probably dead anyway. Yeah, probably. Also, you had to keep the monsters from getting out. Imatul shakes his head, his eyes still closed. That's what I keep telling myself. I mean, are you a fighter? And even if you were, are you a strong fighter capable of fighting alone without a team? I mean, I don't blame you for prioritizing your life over a useless death. He rolls the stone between his hands. I'm just a deckhand. I was the only one left. 
I have piloted the ship as best I could, but I hit rocks as we were passing Brackenberry. I barely made it to Andre's gift before I had to jump overboard and swim for the docks. I'd given up on the cargo, not to mention the payday, but one of the lads pulled this up on his uh, up in his nets. He shows you the opal again. It's part of the scepter. From what I recall, there were three other pieces, and I'd bet you anything they're somewhere in the shallows too. If anyone could find them, there'd be profit to follow. Hmm. Must be a reason you haven't gone looking for the rest of the artifact yourself. Yeah, I know the reason though. I think I've found some of the missing pieces. You don't say? He shrugs. Well, it'll be worth a lot more if you find the rest. He gazes out over the water. Anything else you need? Yeah, have you seen a boy named Darren? I see him near every time I'm at port. He nods at the half-sunken boat. He's the one who found the opal. Good kid, despite the loafer that is despite that loafer of a father. Ah. Uh, I'll bet you it was um him, you know, going through the surf there, the uh, shallows that uh he uh was attacked or something and uh, killed. A loafer. A scowl crosses his leathery face. Drunk more often than sober. Poor company either way. He spends his scant coin in the, uh, the salty mast when he's got mouths to feed. And he thinks his hollowborn daughter is the curse of not curse on his family. Hmm. Like I said, I don't blame him or I don't I don't blame him for being depressed over missing Darren, but it sounds like he really uh, wasn't exactly put together beforehand. It's kind of a piece of work. Perhaps I should drag him out of there. Any, uh, any idea where Darren could be now? He frowns. That boy loves the ships. He's probably playing pirates with the sailors if he hasn't stowed away with the cargo. Thank you for the information. You see that lad? You tell him old Imatol remembers the deal. I owe him a basket of muscles for finding that opal. <laughs> it sounds like he's getting a the short end of that stick, considering what he found is worth. Imatol doesn't exactly sound like a wooden name. That's because it isn't. I'm from the Iximatol Plains, a broad savanna north of the Durwood. Not as not so different from the ocean in a way. There are places where you can stand and turn a full circle and see nothing but the winds making waves in the grass. It actually sounds gorgeous. He watches the surf lapping against the wrecked, the wrecked boat. But at moments like this, I wonder what a business what business a plainsman like me had to take into the water. Well, I mean, do you enjoy your work? There's nothing wrong with someone from a landlocked area who wants to take to the sea. Tell me about Andre's gift. He scratches his sunburned scalp. We've got docks, fishing, and steady ship traffic. All this he waves at the listing shanties crowded against one another. This sprang up against the docks. It's the poorest district in Defiance Bay, but one of the likeliest. He grins. And for lively, nothing beats the salty mast. You'd do better to ask a younger man than me if you want to know about that place. He nods towards a large, round building to the east. How is business? He spits into the water. I'll be glad to sail with the captains who are more careful about their cog cargo from now on. I don't give a worm's wings about the Duke's trafficking laws, but I'm too old to fight ancient whores. He takes a deep breath of the salty air. I just want to enjoy my twilight years doing an honest day's work. Hmm. Just be careful, whatever you do. Don't mention you're two, way, two days away from retirement. Nice and quiet. Quick way to die. More of them. Um, let's get you over out front. 
All right, everyone else. Um, let's go for combusting wounds. And move you a little closer. Matt there, Wolfie. Sagani, you do too. And we'll have you attack uh, that one yeah. as well. Wait until the combusting wounds gets cast. Very good. Now, who's that? Endurance. Addiction. They immune or doesn't say they're immune to dazed. Granted, only has accuracy of 15, but still, it's not bad. Give me a uh, holy radiance next. There, the wolf. Eat him up. Yes. All right, back off. Or not. Can't get a good shot. Um. There you go. Not ready to summon anything. Attack the uh, animat. Audra. <laughs> And let's get a mm, iconic. No, still doubt maybe. We're going to charm. Let's consecrate our ground. Oh, uh! them with black in sight that's blinded are you immune to blinded no good yes there we go oh wait oh no we only have those per rest that's right Go ahead and burn one of these. Uh, that one. That only lasted for 28 seconds. It's probably expired by now. I need something sharper. Finally, the blight. That's it. Wonderful. What is it? Um, nothing especially special here. Mussels cling to the bricks and planks. They're sharp sh uh, shells, sharp enough to cut flesh. As you wish. I see. This is where the third piece is. Yeah, the shaft. Let's go find the boy first, though. At least who I think is the boy.
Oh, wait, there we go. Yep, that's what I thought. A young boy's corpse lies at your feet, half covered in dirt and seaweed. His hands have stiffened around a dagger. Huh, I wonder where he had the dagger. A soul lingers nearby, suddenly confused and lost in the seaside fog. Let's reach towards the soul. As you reach for the soul, it lashes out. Glowing mist strikes at the air around you. The soul can't touch you, but you feel it burn with a feeble, uncontrolled rage. It's okay. You better not try to do anything. Uh, it's okay, I'm here to help you. The soul flickers. It ripples toward you, timidly at first. As it swirls around you, you experience wonder, fear, and the joy of running between the ships at noon. With a jolt, it pulls you into the streets around the salty mast. Women with painted faces weave between men stumbling in and out of the lamplight. Father's gone in for a drink, just like always. What an attentive father. He said he'd only be a few minutes, but it's been hours. Oh, god damn it. Of course it has. He is a deadbeat. The man guarding the door only laughed when he tried to explain this. There's always a back door. In an alley, two men have cornered a woman. Her cheeks are streaked with tears. She's backed against the wall and looking away. They're inching closer. Oh, God. And the kid, he, oh, he tried to help, didn't he? That's why he has the dagger. You step forward. The men barely acknowledge you, but the woman looks at you, a plea in her eyes. You've seen that look in abused strays, in your hollow-born sister, the time father took her from her splintering cradle and to the filled wasp What the fuck? The filled wash basin. You were brave that day. He tried to drown his... Oh. Okay, I'm feeling less and less, um... Sympathy for this father. A knife is in the thug's belt. It's in your hands, and now it's in his thigh. You're small and fast, but not fast enough. Fingers bite into your arm, and a muddy boot sails toward your face. Then, everything is muffled by cold, brackish water. The soul retreats from you. Pulses with a question. <sighs> you did a brave thing. Well, I don't know if the gods will reward you in the next life, but I do hope they do. Life is unfair. I wouldn't expect the next one to be any different. I don't want to torment the boy while trying to get him to move on. Let's it. We, we can't know this for sure, but let's at least try to uh, assuage any fears he might have. You did a brave thing. The gods will reward you in the next life. Darren's soul absorbs this thought and ebbs in the ocean mists around the dock. Hmm. A young boy's corpse lies at your feet, half covered in dirt and seaweed. Yeah. Let's take the dagger. The boy's small hands are rigid in death, but you pry the dagger free. It looks too large and too expensive to have belonged to him. The letter B is carved into the pommel. Oh good, we can maybe find who this belonged to and uh, return it to him, if you catch my meaning. Anyone who would murder a small child just because they tried to stop you from raping someone. Yeah, I think they deserve a fate worse than death. Well? Being stabbed in the leg isn't, after all, no less than they deserved for what they were doing. Actually, a part of the quest.
or rather the task. Yeah, I should hunt down Darren's killer. I need to bring... I can't come to Oda with news of her child's death without also news of justice being served. Of course, it has the B engraved on it. And presumably a name. But that does not exactly narrow down a lot. Of course, also is expensive and ornate, it said, so probably a noble or a rich merchant. And they, we know they spend time in this district, so they might still be here. They might be in the Salty Mast, in fact. But we'll look around the streets first. Alright, while we're looking around, let's go ahead and just return this box to Marceno. Good day, stranger. Marceno fidgets nervously. He grins hopefully at you. Any luck finding the captain's chest? Here you are, contents intact. I probably could have taken those... Ooh, I got hiccups now, uh-oh. And, um... Just told him they were gone when we got there, but... That would have been a real... Well, he would have had to deal with the, conse the consequences, and, uh... Would have been a real mean. But you did it! I mean, I knew you would, but... Oh, thank you, it's all here! Captain Fontanero's sea chest. You saved my life, friend. Truly, I owe you one. Here, the week's wages, like I, oof, like I promised. Yes. Glad to help. Try to be a little less careless from now on. <laughs> I will. I'll never set foot in the salty mast again. Pauses. Well, I mean, not while I'm on watch, at least. Good. That's the important thing. Abandoning your... God damn it. Your watch. Unacceptable. Ooh. Hello, bee named th Thug. Bragan. God damn it. Uh, these hiccups are annoying. I got as much right to stand here as the guys going into that whorehouse. They don't li like what I got to say. They can go someplace else. Hmm. Show them the dagger you found on Darren. This belong to you? That's mine, all right. And no one touches my dagger and lives. Yeah, save yourself the trouble. Uh, no. The point is he uh, murdered a kid. I'd like to see you try. Did I save before this? Oh, I want to confront him about the kid. You murdered a boy here two days ago. What the hell are you talking about? Even if I did kill some runt, you've got nothing to prove it. Yeah. Eh, hey, what about this? Yeah, I'd like to see you try. Yeah, I'm not gonna let him get, get away with paying me. He deserves to die for what he did. Really should have had Edir be the one to confront him, though. Um, had Ima. What? I've had Itamak? I mean, I've had it, Itamak? I don't know. Let's go ahead and heal, though. Oh, he can't. Die now. There, no, there we go. Oh, good, the mage is dead. Standards changed around. 
year two. Why are you talking right now? Right now? With Alot? Oh. This is not the time, Aleph and Sag Sagani. You've been on your own for five years. I've had Itamak, but you can't talk to him. My standards changed around, around year two. I see. What do we got here? Um... Let's puppet one of them. Or not. Just attack. They're too weak to use a puppet. Good riddance to the bastards. A waterlogged grimoire, huh? As right. you wish. Well, the uh, world is a slightly better place, and justice has been served. Granted, that won't bring her son back, but hope she'll be able to at least sleep a little better at night, knowing that the bastard is dead. Should probably talk to the father, too. There he is. Can't, can't a man drink in peace? Your son is dead. Darren was defending one of the women here from a couple of thugs. Wade seems to steer through you. My, my boy died while I was here. Oda, my wife, she always said I'd come to no good, but I never thought. Yeah. Um, you can change. If you want to be worthy of him, go home and take care of your family you still have. I don't like that this is the impetus he, he needed to, uh, make this change, but Oda needs the support right now. Wyatt Wade squeezes his eyes shut. You wouldn't say that if you really knew the kind of father I've been. Oh, trust me, I know. That's why you need to do everything you can to start making things better. He draws a deep breath and looks at the half-empty mug in front of him. With a shaking hand, he pushes it away. I don't know if you're right, but I'll try my I'll try to pull myself together enough to find out. Good. And I'm to go talk to Oda. Not looking forward to that news. Fought for the Deerwood in the Saints War? Hmm? You better grab a couple pints before you get me going on that one. <laughs> Complaints here. I mean, well, probably shouldn't after we just chastised that guy for drinking himself, uh, silly, but, well. It's not like we are, uh, neglecting our duties to drink. So a few, don't know. Uh, enjoying a few wouldn't matter. All right, Oda. Oda's eyes are bright. And her cheeks are ruddy and wet. Wade told me what happened to our son. She sniffs and wipes at her tears. They almost threw him out. Still might. But he swears he'll be a better father to this one. Good. As long as he doesn't want to try to drown it again. Or her. I've... She looks at the motionless baby in the cradle. I don't know whether I believe him. But I suppose I'll give him a chance. I'm not sure there's much choice, really. Here, take these. I've been saving several keepsakes for Darren one day, but he won't need them now. And I doubt I'll have another child to pass them on to. Damn, I can't even turn them down. Well. That is a sad quest well but 
I do hope that the two of you can find some form of uh, some sort of peace. Can I tell you that I killed the bastards who did it? My poor boy. Thank you for finding my boy, and thank you for talking me into coming home. I wish to the gods that it hadn't taken me this long to learn. As you wish. Yeah. I do too. 